Fantastic. So welcome everyone. Welcome to this live stream. Um, increase the profit in your practice. It is easier than you think and Susie and I are going to show you how. Um, so I'm Liz Hancock. I'm the Wealthy Entrepreneur Coach and I've collaborated with the amazing Susie Miller um, who is also with me. I know if you're watching this from my page you can't see her but um, hopefully a lot of you are on expert Expertise TV and and, and can. So, um, hi Susie, how are you today? I'm great, I'm really looking forward to hearing your wisdom and what you're going to share with us all thank today. You. Thank you, thank you. It's so much fun doing these. Um, and apologies the, with if you experienced a few technical issues at the start, we apologise for that, but we're on track now and um, I'm very excited to be so. So, um, how can you increase the profit in your practice? Um, the very logical thing to think would be well I need to increase sales and therefore I need to get more clients and I think a lot of the time we see people going out trying so hard to get clients they almost forget about the ones they've already got so that's a big theme that we're going to focus on today um, but the other the other ways well, I need to put my prices up and there's a lot of resistance to putting prices up and also um, that's there's so much to it in terms of increasing prices. That's the, the subject for another webinar. So um, if you've got any questions on that, please do fire them through. Um, in a nutshell, people pay for quality. They're gonna pay more for quality. If you think, if you went to Primark and um, you spent, you were asked to spend 30 quid on a top or say 50, you wouldn't want to because it's like, well, it's Primark and it's, you know, that doesn't add up. Um, but you go to M&S and you naturally assume that a top's going to cost you a minimum of 30 quid upwards because you know you're paying for quality. So think about that analogy when you're thinking about your pricing. If you're too low, they're going to assume that you're not that good at what you do. If you're high price, they're going to assume that you're absolutely amazing. That's the way our mind works. Mine doesn't work quite like that because I'm so um, sort of into this whole consumer behavior and psychology of sales and so on. But that's what generally most people think. Um, so we've got to we've got to get our head around our heads around that and, and think about wh how we behave as buyers. And very often our clients do the same thing. Um, just turn off that little noise I heard there. So. Um, yeah, increasing sales, increasing clients and increasing rates. I want you to just put that to one side at the moment. And um, Susie, in your experience with the people that you work for, is that the um, the kind of like the thought process that most people, most people think, I've got to get more leads, I've got to get more clients? Yes, yeah, there's a focus on... Um, we're getting a little bit of feedback. Um, there's a huge focus on getting more leads and a lot of energy and time put into that. However, uh, as you say, it, it's hard to to remember sometimes that you've got your existing clients you really need to look after and nurture. And I've certainly become more conscious of that the last year. And it's a difficult one because you think, well, they're already there, <laughs> they're already paying, and I don't, I don't and I haven't got that much time to, to, to give more time and add value where you're not actually getting anything extra for it is is quite a big step but I do highly recommend it because although it does use up a lot of time and it is a lot of, of your own personal investment if you look after your clients well that the, the clients that appreciate that will will stay and it's it's a much healthier and more enjoyable client um, relationship to have absolutely that's a really good point so just client retention generally um, like you're saying so the more you deliver and the better service you provide the longer they're going to stay with you and therefore you're not having to fill the gap that they're leaving open with a new client and let's not forget as well getting new clients actually it takes a lot of time and effort and energy but it also costs it can cost a lot of money and um, you know especially if you're using traditional marketing methods it's going to cost a lot of money and if you look at the cost per new client it can be pretty high whereas you think okay I've already got a client here 
what can I do to make them stay longer? How can I amp up the service I give so they're going to stay longer? And also, remember what we said um, on our last webinar, they're going to refer people to me. So it's really important to have that referral process in place. If you need to know more about that, check out our last webinar because it's all about referrals and how to do that. Um, but yeah, customer service is so, so high. But we also want to make sure that we're not giving away our services for free. Um, so it is a balance between absolutely exceptional customer service and delivery, but actually if we're going above and beyond what they paid for, yes we want to go, we want to deliver above and beyond because we're all into delivering an amazing service, especially if someone's getting divorced and going through a hellish time, you know, you're going to get to know them, um, I know you deal, a lot of the people listening to this will have deal with these people on a regular basis, but I'm sure that doesn't still make them you know, emotionally vested in their clients' well-being and the outcomes for their clients. But if we're going too much over the top, then we're gonna end up feeling resentful for that at some point. We're gonna be overworked and basically overworked and underpaid. So how can we increase the value of each customer? Keeping them, retaining them, obviously is, is a really obvious one. But also, how can we bring in more income from that client, apart from keeping them for longer? So it is hard, like Susie, you said, you know, when you've got a client and they're already paying you, it's sometimes hard to think, OK, well, I can't ask them for more money. But actually, I want you to just flick that on its head and say, what else could I offer them that's going to help them even more? Which is a totally different way of thinking about it. What more can I sell them? versus what can I possibly do to help them to a greater level? Um, it just feels so much nicer, doesn't it? And that is what you're doing. It's not like um, you know a, a trick thing, or let's just pretend that's what we're doing, but really we just want their money. Genuinely, if you give them more, you're gonna help them more. So really you need to kind of like hook into that way of thinking rather than that, oh, I can't ask them for more money. Um, so, Really, what can you do for those for those clients? Now, I'm going to give you a really simple example that I think will resonate with with most people. Um, I think most people have been in a McDonald's, even if you haven't, even if you don't go there regularly. Personally, I love McDonald's, but um, <laughs> I try not to go there too often because I know it's not very great food. Um, but yeah, McDonald's. It used to be on the adverts. Um, would you like to go large? So the first thing is they offer you if you're ordering a meal they're offering you an upsell of increasing that. So I'm buying my, um, I don't know, Big Mac meal. Would you like to go large? Yeah, why not? Actually, I don't, but a lot of people do. Um, if there are, so a lot of people say, yeah, I'd quite like a massive, massive tub of um, vanilla milkshake or whatever. So, um, and for them to give that little bit more in terms, because don't forget the, the size of the burger doesn't change but the, it's only the chips and the drink that does, they're making a lot of money for very little um, outgoing. So that upsell for them is invaluable. And I know they train their staff really, really well in offering that, would you like to go large? Less so um, re more recently, but I know there was a big push at one point to do that. And then that whole um, Super Size Me film came out, which I'm, I am actually gonna mention again in a minute. Amazing. <laughs> mm, I haven't seen it, and now I've heard about this, and I'm like, ah, oh. um, and I can't lay claim to plucking this out and using this. I know someone else used this as an example, talking about the supersize me um, analogy, but I loved it. So um, the other thing is cross-selling. So you order your um, your just your burger or your chicken nuggets, and they automatically say, and most of them do, would you like fries with that, or would you like a meal deal? And you're like, well, yeah, I may as well because I want the drink anyway, so I might as well just have chips too. And again, the cost of them doing that is very little, but we pay a lot more for it. Even though if we were to buy it separately, it would cost more, doing it as a bundle is gonna save us money. So even if we didn't want it, we end up bundling things up and, and upgrading. We're being, um, being cross-selled, uh, or cross-sold to, I should say. Um, so think about, okay, how, how does that apply to me? How does McDonald's possibly apply to my accountancy, business, my, um, my uh, mediation business, and uh, I want to say mentorship then, but mediation or whatever it is that you're, that you're selling. Um, just 
be, be a bit playful with it. Have a brainstorm. Sit down with some of your colleagues and um, say, okay, well, what could we do? What other things do we actually do or end up doing that we're not actually making that isn't necessarily a part of our package, but we end up doing it a lot? Can you use that as a cross sell or an upsell? Um, if, you know, could you offer um, three services? So you have the standard service and then you have a silver and a, and a gold service. Um, that's what, you know, I just use those examples. You could have, um, you know, lots of people use not just silver, gold and bronze, but, you know, platinum, all those other things or VIP service. That's what I use in, in my um, in my programs. But what could you what do? What could you cross sell them into or upsell them into? So having the different levels would be an upsell. And actually, maybe if you um, or could also offer them a um, an audit on their finances or something as well as what you're doing them as the core service that would be a cross sell so what can you do and um, Susie I'll, I feel like you I, just need to add to that. Just, yeah no that's good so for example uh, it might be that a mediator a mediation firm might um, would want to add value because there's two levels isn't there there's the added value to nurture your, your your client without necessarily charging them anymore but then there's also adding value that they'll be happy to pay for because you're you're making it very convenient and easy so I'm just thinking for, from a point of view of mediators for example one of the things that I'm always encouraging them to do is to add value to a, a MIAMS which is a mediation of information and assessment meeting by sending a link to a video showing um, an example of a MIAMS of, of a mediation in progress which might be a role played by actors so they use these things for their own training but they very rarely share it <laughs> people who are actually thinking about using mediation so it could be something very simple that, that already exists and it's just a case of just offering that which is going to really help build their relationship and trust with the client but also and educate them and i think a lot of what i call free the um, free added benefits should be about helping educate your clients as well mm. uh, or giving them opportunities to help their clients and then with the upsell i guess it could be things like um uh, for example, if someone's going through a divorce, they don't just need mediation, they need financial, they need other things. So they might be offering them a special discounted rate to, and I'll say this because I'm just working on it at the moment, um, a weekend retreat on the best way to divorce. Lovely. So for example, so there might be other things that other people are doing, it doesn't cost them any money, mm. but they can offer a special um, offer on, or in some cases even free, to their clients and so that's going to obviously build their reputation. I just wanted to say as well, uh, Andy Harrington has a lovely phrase, uh, he doesn't use the word upsell, he talks about upserve. Yes, yeah. And I, I like that um, that phrase, I think that is much more accurate actually about what you're, you're doing. Yes, absolutely. Remember, sales is serving and yeah, so it's not really upselling, it's upserving, absolutely. That's, yeah, that's a really easy one to, to catch in your brain and, and keep it there. Um, and I loved what you said about like the, the, the retreats, like, yeah, let's think about outside the box here. Like a mediator probably might need, um, their clients going to obviously need the services of an accountant or a financial planner. So have a partnership with those people. Um, if bigger firms might be able to bring their own in-house and, and have, or offer that wider service in-house, but have a partnership with other firms. So you have a referral partnership and it's either reciprocal or it's financially based. So you give them the client and you get a 30% kickback. Um, you know, that's a great way to increase the income in your practice and therefore the profit as well. But I love the idea of like a retreat that's so, so what they will need. So why not do that? You know, there are so many of them out there. Think outside the box, think creatively. Like what an amazing, and also not just the fact that you're offering that and that they might go and have a lovely time, just the fact that you're showing it to them, I think would really make them feel like they are so cared for and that you really care about them not just doing this job for them and getting the divorce sorted. So I think things like that are just so, so, um, so special. I think that's a wonderful example, absolutely. Um, and, you know, maybe then you could have a relationship with that retreat um, 
provider and you go and do an hour's presentation at the retreat for those people that are at the retreat but haven't got the advice that they want again you're up serving those people but you're bringing in the people that's a really nice way of potentially getting more customers into your business more clients um Is that yeah, because that's how I, I can up serve the visitors to the retreat is by asking mediators who have referred people in to come and, and be on a panel, do Q&A or even to do a, a presentation them, themselves. So yeah. it's all, all these types of collaborations really help mm. everybody. It's, it's always a win win. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And that's like such a nice way of getting new clients like rather than oh, what advert do I have to put out or do I have to put out on Facebook, in the local press, all those things like. How much fun going to like meeting people in person they're, they're more likely to buy because they're getting to know you face to face and um, hopefully there'll be someone there who is waving your flag and saying how great you are so it's a really really great opportunity i'm so glad you brought that up susie thank you um and could you give some examples of how you because you do events don't you and you help businesses so perhaps yes. give some of the examples of, of how you do this yes i do so um i had i'll give you an example of a client that did it beautifully um, so he was a wedding photographer um, and he wasn't massively high-end um, he was fairly cheap but the thought of him putting his prices up absolutely terrified him and I did get managed to get them up a bit most of my clients when they come to me I'm like you need to double your prices they went up but um, I don't want to say he wasn't very good but he was in his he was you know fairly placed for what he was charging, let's say that. Um, I thought, how can we make this better? How can we bring more income into him and get him more bookings in a very easy way? Um, so I got him to speak to a number of other wedding photographers who, um, who were a bit more high end, who would have calls from people who as soon as they heard the price would be like, oh, no, sorry, and just disappear. Because, you know, I mean, you make a phone call, someone says 20 grand, you're gonna be like, wow, uh, that's what I was budgeting for my whole wedding. Thank you, but no thanks. You might not actually say that, but, but they, would, they would very quickly know who was a client and who wasn't by the conversations they'd have with them. They had a very, very slick process. Um, they had staff and salespeople and so on. So, um, so we set up this partnership with another wedding um, photographer who was much more high end. And then they, they didn't want to um, be rude or anything. So they would they would gently let them down but they started to say well I have got somebody else who I can recommend and they passed him them through to to this guy didn't always automatically mean he got the business but it meant a, a phone call and he did get clients that way so not only was he getting clients the guy at the with the nice fancy wedding photography and um, business was getting a kickback not not lots but he referred a lot of people on so over time that um, that snowball effect is great for the individual running his photography business, getting more clients from not doing anything, and great for the other guy who you could say, well, he doesn't need the money because he's earning loads already. But who who would say no to free money? Um, he was getting a, a little bit more, so it worked beautifully for both of them. But also, um, he, he nobody likes to, to give a price to a client who then goes, that's too much, and then send them away. You want you always want to give them something. So at least you send them on to somewhere that's more suitable for their budget. They're going to still remember you really well. So that's I think that's a, a yeah fantastic such a good idea. You've just given me a brilliant idea that I hadn't had before. Thank you. <laughs> no, my pleasure. I love it when that happens. And you know, I'm sure there are. Um, mediators and solicitors that are in different brand, uh, price brackets for different clients because divorce isn't it's across the board isn't it so who could you buddy up with the um, you know however you want to describe them the higher end or the lower end and have that reciprocal relationship because it does benefit both people um, so yeah that's a, that's a great one and really as you say really kind and nice to the client as well um, and equally, if someone's put off by because your price is low, remembering what we said earlier on, we pay for quality, you could refer them upwards as well. So it does, it absolutely works always, really. Um, okay, what, so yeah, an example for, for what I do. I have um, in my, so I, I teach marketing and um, sales and so on, and, um, and online marketing as well. And online business you know I coach coaches and, and 
those kinds of people in the online world, but I'm not a digital marketing expert. So I can tell you the strategy, but I can't say, right, you need to buy this technology and this, and this clicks into here. And, and you know, that's not my strength. So I have great assistants who are in my Facebook group who help out, but if people want more than that, which most people need, and I recommend they get it, um, I've got a group of people that I can refer on to and um, I've just formalized that a little bit more with um, with one group of people I need to do it with the other um, as to a formal referral process so if I refer someone on I get money and likewise they're doing the same for me it's very easy to think okay I could refer on but don't forget to get the reciprocal referral back um, and make it make it so it works um good 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 okay and um, any if we, let me just check the facebook group in case we've got any questions oh my husband's watching hello um <laughs> that's slightly odd pity. um i hope it's i hope i'm doing all right babe um and michelle hello michelle any comments or questions you guys have got please do let me know um but we haven't got any here yet have we susie no not can yet. i ask one yes please if um were you saying it's, it's to, to make it reciprocal? How? What's the, any kind of guidance on on doing that? Because, you know, how how do you set those boundaries in a in a friendly, amicable, mm. trusting way? Mm. But that actually, those boundaries are really really important. I was speaking to someone recently, and uh, and they said, I, ho I hope you don't mind with our collaboration if we do a little contract, because I've been burnt in the past. And I said no problem i'm really glad you suggested it because yeah. i've had the same same thing so yeah. i think there's often a lack of confidence about going this is the way it's going mm. to work and so what if you give us a, some guidance on that that would be really useful yeah i think um having a contract is really important um and that's why you know with one of these um the people i was just talking about with one of the set of them i have a contract in place with the others i don't yet so i said i need to formalize that um, so I think it's, it is slightly embarrassing, but actually it really positions you as professional and an expert and, you know, you could just say, well, this is a bit awkward, but like you said, your friend said, would you mind if, and no one's going to say no, because if they, and if they did say no, I'd say, well, alarm bells, I'm not quite sure if I'd <laughs> want to carry on working with them. So yeah, I think that's really, really important to have that agreement in place. Even if it's just an email, I mean, I would really do it something that you all sign. Um, you can get um, electronic signatures so you don't have to post it or anything. E-Sign Genie is what I use. Um, but absolutely, definitely. And in terms of what's fair or what, what, what would be in that, it would be like if, if you do refer to someone to me, then you, you pay me. Um, and basically, in a nutshell, um, there might be... You know, you might come up with sort of qualifying, um, uh, what's the word? Um, terms. Terms, thank you. <laughs> Very simple word, couldn't come to it. Um, but it might be that, you know, the client has to stay with you for a specific time before you give them the referral money. That's what I do in my business. I give people, um, if, if someone signs up to my mastermind from a referral, I give the person that referred them a month free coaching but at the end of their coaching contract in case that person doesn't stay with me and that's never happened luckily so everyone's always got their referral money and but it also that also encourages the other people to stay with me for longer um because i'm like well carry on because don't forget you've got that free month and and it's it's helpful to get them engaged for longer um so really it's it's about what feels right for you what feels fair what are you going to be happy with and you don't want to be sitting there thinking hang on a minute i've given 50 percent of this client away and i'm actually making a loss on what it's costing me to serve this client so you have to make sure it works um so you know 50 percent might be right it's it's good for me if i do if i have someone that refers someone to me for a group program um that that might work because it's group, so it's my time is leveraged. I'm delivering it anyway. But if it was one to one and I was giving away fifty percent, not quite sure I'd be happy with that because that means I'm getting much less money for much more of my time. So you've got to do that sort of calculation really and find out what what feels right and go with your guts as much as as much as anything. Obviously, work it out properly, but go with your guts because um, if you've got an inkling that you're that it's not quite fair you need to sort that out at the beginning because else you'll never feel good about it and it probably won't work anyway if that's the case 
Um, does that make sense, Susie? Yes, and I have been channeling using an affiliate link, thinking that would, but actually the technology is still not simple enough for a lot of people to use. And I think it's probably simpler to, um, I think the affiliate links are very useful because you need, to, I need to know if someone's referred to someone to me. I, I don't want to yeah. rely on the person's memory yeah. and they may have got that link from a mediator's uh, website. They, they may never have even spoken to them. And so for me, it's vital that I know where they came from because I want to send them back there when they're ready. So it's yeah. part of the arrangement. But the thought of actually having a proper contract in place, I hadn't really thought about that. And I think that would be extremely helpful because also it just lays it out and encourages yeah more action shall we say yeah. and also reciproc the reciprocity which of course is so important in these arrangements we yeah. we love you know the, the more that we it's not just about sending someone if i'm sending you clients um and um and we actually haven't got a referral relationship because i said i i just wanted to collaborate with you so sometimes it's not necessarily mm -hmm. to have that in place but i know that you know if the more i help you well, you're going to help my clients and that makes me happy and so for me that that that's all that's needed so there's different ways that um that those kind of relationships can work but yeah. certainly when there's a financial aspect i think to have a contract is a really good a good idea absolutely yeah absolutely and you know like susie just shared susie and i at the moment anyway don't have a financial agreement in place but as she says she wants to send me clients if i get clients through doing this that's brilliant i would love it and i would send her you know something like I'm, I, I'm not gonna let I'm not gonna let it sit because I don't want to really um, so I'm sure it's gonna happen but um, you know what what could what else could you do it doesn't have to be financial as long as it is working for you um, that that's the key thing um, and we are obviously subject to this is bringing more profit into your practice um, so and, and it take, takes us back to what you were saying earlier because that's um, allowing me to give added value to my clients which doesn't I don't have to pay for so uh, but so that's for me that's the benefit because yes. I want to give that added value to my existing clients mm -hmm. um yeah so yeah, it, yeah it, all, it all works all works in a nice yeah. big circle it does yeah. it really does and if your clients are getting you know um better skilled in managing their practices they're going to deliver a better service so it all it all works out um okay cool there's one other way that very often gets forgotten um, that is a very easy, usually, way of increasing profit in your practice. And that is to look at your expenses, look at your outgoings. Um, and I try and do this, I teach money mindset um, in one of my programs. So I do, um, it's kind of, that is my accountability because every time I do the call where I say, right, everyone needs to do a big audit of their finances, they need, and this isn't just in business, but um, you know, like you'd automatically think, okay, finances, I need to spend less on marketing. You probably don't. Marketing should be your biggest outgoing usually. Um, but what else are you paying for that you don't need to? You know, are you um, just do a stock take? Like if you're carrying stock, I know your guys wouldn't, Susie, but if you're carrying stock, how much stock have you got? Could you get better supplier deals? Um, what are you spending money on? You know, simple things like are you turning off the lights to save electricity? Because you've got to pay your electricity. And um, have you got, you know, do you, I don't know, are you spending like a fortune upgrading your phone every year and putting it on business expenses where you could do it every two years? Um, where is it? Because it's usually those little things that overall community, community. I can't say that word. All together. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm not doing very well with my words today. Um, all together make that difference. Um, so, you know, I, I did this recently. I was um, telling my clients to stop signing up to every offer under the sun online, all those little um, little deals like £27 here, £67 here, membership sites. And I was signed up to a membership site. I called myself out on it. Um, I was signed up to a membership site that I haven't even been able to access. Um, and it was the push I needed to sort out. You know, yes, it's, it's value for what I got if I was actually getting it. Um, it is really good value, assuming the content's good, but I wasn't even getting it. And so often we just look at that and it comes in, we think, oh yeah, I must sort that out. And then next month comes around, we still haven't sorted it out. And over a few months that adds up. So do a massive audit. Um, a friend of mine did this, with um, one of his clients recently who is a gym owner 
and he was with him in person. So he made him pick up the phone and was like coaching him while he was on the phone call. And he got new um, deals for all of his gym equipment and saved in one day, saved 20,000 um, pounds, which is just amazing, isn't it? So I know that's quite unique because it was equipment and suppliers and deals like that. And obviously you guys are, are very different, but look at where you're spending your money is all your marketing effective i said before your marketing should be the biggest cost but actually if you're spending something on an ad every month in a paper or in some um, periodical that isn't ever giving you a return then that's not effective marketing look at what's giving you a return look at what is getting your clients always find out if you get a new client always find out where they come from it sounds a really simple thing that you assume everyone does but you don't always no. Okay. Um, it's really easy to forget you're so happy to have a new client you know or if your receptionist is is talking to them or whatever they might just forget that vital question so look at your expenses look at your outgoings do an audit and be really you know really good on it and and do it at home as well so i know we're talking profit in your practice there's probably a lot of other stuff that you could do to save money that's actually going to give you more money in your bank account every month when you get your wages or you get your dividends or whatever so um yeah we we often spend so much more money than we need to and we forget that we're doing it so give yourself an audit and um let's know how much money you save that would be brilliant good advice Good, good, good. So um, I think, let me just check into Facebook, see if there's any other questions. We are, we've been going for half an hour, which is good. Um, I think, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. I'm just checking my notes to make sure I haven't missed anything. But um, yeah, we would love to hear from you, um, Susie and I. We would love to hear from you, hear your thoughts, um, tag us in if you have any questions. We'll be in the Facebook group checking in away. We're going to share this in Susie's group, in the marketing support group. And um, yeah, we're here to help. And I, I really am excited to hear about light bulb moments because I know Susie's had one. I've had one about the beauty retreat. I love that idea. There's, um, you know, there's so much opportunity out there and possibility. So go grab it. And uh, and certainly we've uh, if people want to test in within the groups want to test out ideas ask questions get feedback I and mean, that's what they're for so the the marketing support group is specifically set up so it's a sort of safe space where professionals it's mediators um, financial uh, in fact people have nothing to do with the divorce industry as well in there but they're business owners and they want space to under have a bit of hand holding on the sort of technical stuff and see uh, great content like this learn and um and the cost to be in that group is 10 pounds a month plus fat so if anyone's interested in that there will be a link added but, uh, but yeah and uh, but invite people who are already within the group to to uh, yeah, to share their ideas, to share their suggestions, and because within the group you may find those collaborations, those extra mm. benefits that you can share with your own clients to to upserve them. Yes, I think that's a great point, Susie. And if you don't find them naturally, just put up a post. Say, I am looking for. And if that person isn't in the group, the likelihood is that you're spreading the net far wider, and they're going to know someone. So this is how the whole referral thing works. And I think that's absolutely key for your guys, hence why we've started on referrals and why we've talked a lot about them and affiliates um, today. So yeah, awesome, brilliant. Thank so you. you say a little bit more about how you, how you help people and also the next webinar. Yes, so we will have a webinar next month and um, probably on, on rates, but we will, um, we'll, we'll, we'll make sure. And actually we want ideas from you. What is it that you guys are struggling with? Um, and anything goes, Yes, this is, especially in Susie's group, it's for um, mediators, lawyers, accountants, all those professional services that are related to divorce. But actually, you can ask any question about marketing, about mindset, about whatever it is you need. Tell us what you need. So, and this is for my group as well, anyone else that sees this, tell us what you need and then we can deliver that because, you know, We've got a fair idea of what you need, but it would be great to know that we are getting it right. Um, and also on that note, I mentioned mindset just now. I'm doing a free mindset challenge next week and um, it's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday in my group. And I, I'm happy to run it in your group as well, actually. Yeah, yes, please, if you could. Thank that. you. Yeah, yeah, we could absolutely do that. So um, 
the only reason you don't have to opt in, but if you do, it just means you get the emails and the um, the reminders and you'll get the replays as well. Um, you can access it in the Facebook group, but um, sign up. It's going to be brilliant. Three days to really just get your mind, body and soul freed up and fired up. We are um, a third of the way through the year, which I find terrifying. A quarter Ooh. doesn't. It's like, oh, quarter. I've got three quarters left. A third, I've only got two thirds left. That's a bit more scary. So um, yeah, let's make sure that the next two thirds are absolutely on point, awesome, that you haven't got any sabotage going on, that you're not held back, you're, you're happy to take measured risks and really go out there and get those clients and grow your business and be fantastic and enjoy it. Because if we don't enjoy it, life's pretty miserable. So um, I will pop the link in, I can do that here. Um, and pop it onto the B, um, uh, Expert TV webinar as well, if you can, in the yes, comments. I think I've just oh, yes, brilliant. There. Thank you. I can see it. Good, good, good. So I'll put it in here as well. And then when we share this in your group, um, your group, Susie, I will pop it in there too. So um, fantastic. That's been um, wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Susie, for inviting me to your awesome group. And um, yeah, just fire any questions at us at any time. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Till the next time. See you next month.